What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cardinar? Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game preview, a special Kickstarter preview. And today, I'm very excited to be checking out Besiege from Concrete Canoe Games. This is for two to four players, ages 12 plus, so it'll take you a little less than 30 minutes to play. And in Besiege, you'll be going to be playing a medieval themed card game where you're going to be setting out champions and fighters trying to utilize their special abilities at the right times in order to get rid of all your cards and defeat three of your evil enemies before your opponents can do so. Sound intriguing? Let's open it up see how it works all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of besiege now as always like to mention this is the promotional copy i have in front of me so take everything you see here with a grain of salt so first and foremost uh we're gonna have our handy dandy rule booklet it's going to be four pages double-sided full color it's got uh, pictures and uh, all the good stuff in there that you expect from a quality rule booklet uh so in this game you're gonna be trying to defeat three of the aegean knights which are these bad guys right here they uh, they make things substantially more difficult and you're also gonna be trying to get rid of your body bottom row of cards and get all the cards out of your hand. If you can get rid of all the cards out of your hand in your bottom row and defeat three knights, you will be the winner of the game. Well, how do you do that? Well, let's go over the components that'll get a little bit into the gameplay. So first and foremost, uh, we're going to have two main kinds of cards in this game. You're going to have the Aegean Knights, which you're not going to use too much until you uh, you build up your army, so to speak. And these guys are going to make things very difficult for you. Uh, they're either going to add power to something and make it harder to defeat them, or they'll say that they can only be beaten by certain suits because because each one of these cards is going to have a special suit on it. I believe there's four suits in all in the game you'll have. Uh, and they're all color coordinated. So you have green, yellow, blue, red, and then purple, I do believe, are just for the siege tower. Because those are wilds. Uh, so... You're going to be trying to beat those guys. You're going to be going through this deck of cards right here, which actually should not be like that. Uh, but you'll be going through this deck of cards right here, which are going to have cards numbered 1 through 10. Now, if you get the 10s and the 9s, they're going to be very, very powerful. They're going to, uh, for instance, this one is going to be nearly unbeatable in battle, you know, barring some some things going on here and there. Uh, and the, the more powerful cards you have, the better special abilities it's going to unlock for you. Uh, these are going to be things that you're going to be able to do, but only if you have them in front of you so you're going to want to have them out there because they're going to help you out so you're going to have numbers one through ten and let's you know you have the squire down there all the way up to an entire legion of soldiers ready to fight for you so obviously you want to see big numbers now uh the net last card you're going to get is you're going to be your handy dandy little cheat sheet card which is going to right here this side is going to be going over your turn order and what you can do and this side is going to be going over how you can spend your coins uh spend your um i think they're called fate tokens or something like that i'm, I'm drawing a blank right now but you're going to have these little cards uh those little tokens that you're going to be getting every Every single round that you're going to be spending strategically on various different things and I'll go down the list right now for you so during the beginning of your turn you're gonna make sure that you have at least three cards and you're gonna have three cards and what you're gonna to have to do is you're actually going to have to be defeating whoever is in the middle of the table so for instance there's a three right here so I'm going to need to lay something that is higher than a three now the thing is, in this game, you want to get rid of all the cards in your hand. Uh, so let's just say I can play this five right here. This would cost me one coin to play it, because as you can see, if you want to play one regiment, it's going to cost you a coin. Uh, so if I did that, that would be my turn. My turn would pretty much be over. I'm sure I could do some other various different things here and there, switching cards out, flipping stuff over. But for the most part, that would be my turn. So that's not really an optimal turn. Now, I'm seeing right now that I have three war pigs down here. Now, the thing about a regiment is, a regiment it can be one two three four it can be any number of cards so that seems like a really good strategy right here is to try and get rid of all these war pigs but the thing is if you're going to do that you're going to have to pay uh you're going to have to pay extra money uh which is going to be something that's going to be in low supply because you're only going to be getting two of these every turn or if you spend them all you'll be getting three so you kind of want to try and work the system there but anywho you're eventually going to be spending these putting them on top of there so now uh, your opponent would have to play at least something higher than a six you'll be playing your cards down here but you'll have to pay to do all sorts of various different things uh you'll be drawing more cards until you get run out of the deck completely once you run out of the deck completely you're gonna be revealing these cards right here and attempting to fight them now you can fight them earlier but it's gonna cost you three of your fate tokens to fight them so it's gonna be extremely expensive to do that but if you have the fate tokens it is always an option so you're gonna be fighting 
you're going to be fighting these guys. And if you can be the first person to defeat, defeat three of these guys and get rid of all the cards down here and get rid of all the cards in hand, you're going to win the game. But it's not as easy as that. Because as I mentioned, the heart of the game is going to be you trying to figure out how you are going to one-up your opponent right here. Because the thing is, so let's just say that uh, my opponent could not play at least a seven or higher. They have to pick up all these cards and put them back into their hand, which is bad because as I mentioned, you want to get rid of all the cards in your hand. But there is one thing that lets you break the rules in the game, and that is inspiring your regiments. What this means is, uh, so let's just say there's a six out there, and I really need to get to a seven. Now, I could play this card right here uh, if I wanted to play one to play it, but then also one to bump it up to a seven. So you'll be able to use your fate tokens in a variety of different ways, uh, including, you know, inspiring them to make them higher. And as I mentioned, all these various different people are going to give you different special abilities you can use. So this one will allow you to play two regiments. You'll be able to get a, rid of a lot of cards in your hand. This one's going to be able to pass one card from your hand to another player. So you might have a low card in your hand you just want to get rid of. Hey, you can pass to another player, potentially get a better card. But once you have been able to successfully defeat all three, uh, three of these guys, get rid of all your cards, then you will be the winner of the siege. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, the Siege from Concrete Canoe Games. Who might be digging this game, which is, by the way, coming to a Kickstarter near you very, very soon. I'll be sure to post the Kickstarter link below. First and foremost, if you're looking for a light, quick, portable, compact game, this one definitely might be for you. I think there's like 52 to 70 cards. There's a small amount of cards. It doesn't take up too much room on the table, uh, so it's probably going to be compact, lightweight. You can take it with you just about anywhere you want to go. Also, if you're digging the medieval theme, everything about this game definitely reeks of that medieval theme. All the cards are going to be somewhat thematic, like the assassin's going to be able to do things. You'll be like, oh, that makes sense because they're an assassin. Last but not least, this is a very, very easy game uh, once you know how to play to teach. It is by no means a complex game, so it's very simple to learn and very simple to teach once you get past uh, once you get past understanding the rule booklet. So if this sounds like it might be up your alley, be sure to check out the Kickstarter link below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. Also in the comments below, let me know if you were living in a medieval castle, what would you want your job to be? No, you can't say king. I personally would like to be. Uh, ooh, that's a tricky one. I really should think about these before I ask them. I think I'd like to be the guy that tests all the food before the king eats it. Because I mean, how often do, do, do people People try and attempt to poison kings. You know what? Maybe that's a pretty terrible pick. Let me know in the comments below what you think a good pick is. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And thanks for your time, YouTube.